G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy for yet another Power Rankings. A month ago in the season, and uh, if you're unfamiliar, this video is trying to get a feel for the form rankings of teams right now. It is really tricky. I keep saying that every week because it is incredibly hard. But as we always do, we're going to start from the bottom, for the least form teams of the competition, all the way to the number one seeded team. Now, I always do have a particular focus on the last five rounds, but it's not just about the last five rounds. So for instance, you look at someone like a Sydney who are in horrific form right now and won one of their last five games, how far down the rankings do you put it? So I've tried to apply a little bit of common sense here. Let's just get straight into it. We're going to start with our bottom three, and this bottom three has remained constant since, I don't know, the first month of the season probably. We've still got West Coast as the worst side of the competition, albeit two of the last three performances have been better. One in the middle was horrific, but uh, nonetheless, still not quite enough to make up the gap on Richmond, who again only lost to the Pies by 26 points after a pretty good performance against the Power in Adelaide the week before. So Richmond's still ahead of West Coast on form. One wins at either of those teams could shift that, but we'll see. North Melbourne is still 16th, and I feel bad for that because they have played some pretty good footy, but they haven't done quite enough to leapfrog anyone above them. So they're one and four from their last five games. Most recently, a pretty good showing against Geelong down in Tassie, but nonetheless, still lost by 40 points. So they're still firmly entrenched. It's clearly better than Richmond and West Coast on current form. I'm pretty confident in my tip in North Melbourne to beat Richmond this week, but we will see. Richmond can be a plucky team. So now let's talk about the rest of the teams above that where it gets a little bit murkier. So I, I had Collingwood as the 15th best side on form at the moment, and I'm going to double down on that, despite the fact that they beat Richmond on the weekend. But even still, they lost four games before that, and they've still only won one of their last five. Their losses have been against the Gold Coast Suns, the Bombers, the Cats, and the Hawks, and in particular, that Hawks loss was very one-sided. So I have Essendon slightly ahead of them, Essendon got well beaten by St. Kilda, got beaten by the Crows the week before, and they are bleeding. They're sliding. However, in their last five, they beat Collingwood. So I think it's fair to suggest that Collingwood hasn't done enough to quite leapfrog Essendon yet. So I'm going to keep Essendon above Collingwood, but they've definitely dropped down the rankings as the 14th best side currently. So the two teams above them, I've got Melbourne, who are in 13th spot there with two wins of the last five. Again, the logic for them being ahead of Essendon is because they've beaten Essendon in their last five, which I think is fair to suggest. You look at Melbourne's three losses in their last five. One was a good loss, if that term even exists, against the Brisbane Lions. They were pretty bad against the Dockers in Perth and then lost to the Giants by two points in a relatively good game. I still think they look shaky, but nonetheless, probably still just ahead of Essendon given they beat them recently. Then you've got the Gold Coast Suns in 12th. Now, their most recent loss to the Lions was a fairly honorable loss. You know, I don't make too much of the narrative that they should have won that game because it was at home. So they're kind of stabilized, having won two of their last five with wins over Collingwood and the Port Adelaide Football Club in that stretch as well. So then the two teams above that, again, are tricky. So I've got Adelaide and St. Kilda. Um, St. Kilda in 10th, Adelaide in 11th. These two teams are tricky to separate, but are also some... Decent form if you isolate the last five. So let's start with Adelaide because that might seem like a weird call given they just got belted on the weekend. But they've won more than they've lost in the last five. Those wins have been against the Giants, the Saints, and the Bombers. Now you could make an argument, should Adelaide be ahead of St. Kilda? I suppose we'll get to that. And their two losses have been against the Brisbane Lions and the Hawthorne Football Club. Now, Brisbane and Hawthorne are two of the best teams in the competition. So while it was a poor loss at home, don't get me wrong, Hawthorne are beating a lot of teams at the moment. Um, and I, like I said, disappointing performance. That might be why I've got them below St. Kilda. So St. Kilda have beaten Sydney in their last five, smashed West Coast, and smashed the Bombers most recently as well. And their two losses have been against both South Australian clubs. Now, they did lose to Adelaide, so you could make the argument Adelaide should be higher, but I think just the recency bias of St Kilda's last few weeks and Adelaide being quite poor against Hawthorne makes me slip it the other way. Bearing in mind as well, that was an Adelaide home game. So let me know in the comments what you think about that, but St Kilda is rising up these rankings with a few good wins in a row and really making a late season surge that will ultimately just ruin their draft pick probably. So then we get into our top nine. So this is hard. This is where I decided to put Sydney. Sydney are one and four in their last five. So I actually saw a post from Useless AFL Stats who said Sydney have just completed the worst run of five games for any team that ended those five games on top of the ladder. So that's a pretty good foundation from which to make my point here. They've won one in their last five and that was against North Melbourne. Now, their losses weren't too shameful until last weekend. They lost to the Dockers by a point. They lost to a pretty good St. Kilda side at the moment. Like St. Kilda have really extended upon that form. Uh, they lost that game by two points, I think. 
The Brisbane Lions then beat them by two points. Toughest trip in football right now, the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba, and they nearly won the game. Then on the weekend, they had an absolute howler against the Western Bulldogs. So I've got them sliding a little bit of recency bias, but again, they've only won one of their last five. But I think it would be kind of absurd to drop them too much further. Like if you strictly made this just about the last five, well, you'd put them in the bottom three or four. But I want it to be a little bit reflective of quality as well. So again, it's a little bit arbitrary, but I've got Sydney, at least the worst of the contenders playing for finals right now on current form. I do expect they'll rectify that soon. Carlton similarly have been sliding a little bit. They've won, I think, one of their last four, but two of their last three. And those two wins were against the bottom, or two of the bottom three sides of the competition in Richmond and North Melbourne. In fact, that is the bottom two on the ladder. Their losses have been a close loss to the Giants. They got beaten by an informed Bulldog side, and then they got shut down in the second half against the Power in Melbourne, and that is a concerning result. And overall, things are not clicking for the Carlton Footy Club. So I've got them sliding a little bit. Doesn't mean I'm not saying they're you know, a contender come September, but this has to be reflective of current form. And at the moment, I think that's probably where Carlton is at. So now we're into our top seven teams. And these are obviously the next batch of three is, is a difficult one. And obviously, in my opinion, the best three teams outside the top four teams on form. Can I just say as well, there there are six teams who have won four out of the last five games. So I have the Giants as one of those teams in seventh with wins over the Blues, Tigers, Suns, and Demons. A good win on the road against the Demons, who are again a little bit all over the place, but they were 27 points down and they've won four out of the last five. So I will put my hand up and say I probably have been a little bit more. I've probably been sleeping on the Giants a little bit. I think it's probably just due to my higher expectations for them but their form line is pretty good. So they take seventh and the Cats just above them. Again, I've made this point before. I don't know if I'm super convinced by the Cats as genuine finals threats or, or, you know, contenders to go deep this year, but you look at their form line, it's actually hard to argue with. So they did lose to the Blues in their last five, but they beat the Bombers easily. They beat the Hawks easily down at GMHBA. They beat the Pies and then they beat North. Obviously North played well, but the Cats just had that polish. So I think the Cats in sixth spot is probably fair and I've got Port Adelaide leapfrogging them. Again, this is real tight and a little bit subjective, but Port Adelaide have also won four of their last five. They have a loss at Metricon or People's First to the Gold Coast Suns. That's their only loss in their last five. When you consider they've beaten the Bulldogs, the only team to do that in the last five games. They beat the Saints, who are in pretty good form, although that was a bit of a stinky game, to be honest. But they beat them at Marvel, they beat Richmond, and most recently beat Carlton. So I think Port Adelaide deserves some credit to leapfrog into the, being the fifth best team in the competition. And this is just my perception, but it, it just feels like it's a bit out of nowhere. So well done to the power. They're quietly putting together some really good form. So let's talk about our top four. Ah, oh, man, I think I have Fremantle dropping down a spot, but it doesn't feel right. It's probably just because they played a weak team in the Eagles. And so the results of one other team have made me leapfrog them. We'll get to that. I think I had Fremantle in third last week. Either way, a pretty safe bet to finish top four this year. Not really doing too much wrong. They had one loss against the Hawks down in Tassie, and that's probably why I have the Hawks still slightly ahead of them. I thought they were very impressive against the Crows, very clinical. You know, finally got that percentage back up with a big win at Adelaide Oval, and Adelaide are up and down, but they're also a pretty good home team. So Hawthorne stay ahead of Fremantle, but I think it's really line ball between those two teams. But the rise of this week is the Western Bulldogs with a huge win over the Sydney Swans. And again, you consider their last five, They had a pretty average performance against the power in Adelaide. But again, we we look at the powers form and suddenly that doesn't look too horrendous. Um, They they beat North, North played well. They beat the Blues. They beat the Cats at GMHBA comfortably and they smashed Sydney in Sydney. Now, the Swans are in amazing form, but the Cats have also only lost one of their last five. I think they are clearly one of the best teams in the competition on current form. And I've said elsewhere, the Bulldogs and Hawthorne currently sit eighth and ninth on the ladder. And I feel like it would be a travesty not to see these teams in the finals. I actively want these teams to play finals because I think they could really mix it up this year. Who comes out is another question entirely, but the Bulldogs have been in fantastic form. It's starting to click for them after starting the year under a mountain of pressure. There was a form slump, you know, I think in the middle of the year at some points, you know, I think they were the first team to lose to Hawthorne when Hawthorne went on that run. Since then, it's been very smooth sailing for the Western Bulldogs. And the only team above them is the Brisbane Lions, who 
Again, I don't think I need to make the case for. I've had them as my number one team for a number of weeks now. And, you know, a good win. First team to uh, beat the Suns at home this year. And arguably the number one seed for the Premiership at the moment on current form. It's hard to argue with that with Sydney dropping away. So there you have it, guys. I, I plan to do a analysis of the finals race any day now. So hopefully you will get that tomorrow because I think this is starting to really get juicy. And we're probably down to nine teams in my opinion. But picturing which team to miss out is a tricky one at the moment. But let me know in the comments where you think I went wrong or what you think I got right. And for now, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.